Hi guys, I hope that you're well and welcome back to Fit Education's Virtual Classroom. In today's micro teach topic, we are going to follow on from yesterday's topic where we looked at the vascular structures. We are going to focus on blood pressure. What is blood pressure and the different classifications of blood pressure in terms of cardiovascular health. As ever guys, if you appreciate our content, we'd love it if you could like, comment and share and support us in what we do. So let's have a look at the different blood pressure classifications now. So blood pressure is a measure of the force that the blood applies to the walls of the artery as it flows through them. It's measured in millimetres of mercury and is expressed using two numerical readings. The two numbers represent the systolic and diastolic blood pressures. Systolic blood pressure is the pressure exerted on the artery walls when the cardiac muscle is contracting. This is the higher of the two numbers and is usually noted first. It is caused by the rising volume of blood flowing through the arteries with each contractual beat of the heart, which increases the pressure within the artery walls. Diastolic blood pressure is the pressure exerted on the artery walls when the heart is in a relaxed state. The heart goes through this period of relaxation, known as diastole, to allow the chambers of the heart to fill with blood prior to the contraction occurring. The diastolic blood pressure is always the lower and second of the two readings. There are two further terms which we need to know in regards to blood pressure and the vascular structure, and that is vasodilation and vasoconstriction. So all blood vessels are able to widen, which is known as vasodilation, or narrow, known as vasoconstriction. This is because of the smooth muscle found within the vascular walls. It's this change in vascular tone which enables the body to direct the flow of blood to the different tissues, and it also plays a part in the regulation of blood pressure. An example of vasoconstriction and dilation occurring is after eating a meal, where the blood vessels that feed the digestive system become vasodilated and flow the blood to assist in digestion, while the surrounding musculature and blood vessels feeding those muscles are then vasoconstricted, reducing that local blood flow so all of the flow can travel towards the digestive tract. So blood pressure will vary throughout the day and is never constant. However, having a blood pressure in optimal ranges will significantly reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, which many individuals don't know that they have until they have their blood pressure checked. This is how hypertension is termed a silent killer, as many people with high blood pressure don't know that they have it. So let's have a look at the different blood pressure classifications now. Optimum blood pressure for reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease is deemed below 120 systolic and 80 diastolic. Individuals with optimum blood pressure in this range are safe to exercise with no concern. Readings lower than this may have a clinical significance, but are not necessarily associated with an increased cardiovascular disease. This is termed as hypertensive, and hypertensive individuals may wish to seek GP guidance and possibly find a causation. Readings above an optimum level do, however, pose an increased cardiovascular risk. With readings above 140 systolic and 90 diastolic, being classed as stage 1 hypertensive. These individuals will require a checkup from their GP and must either be referred or cleared to exercise ahead of any intervention. Normal ranges of blood pressure are typically between 100 and 130 systolic and 60 to 85 diastolic. However, individuals with a blood pressure above 160 over 100 are classified as high-risk individuals and need to exercise under specialist instructor supervision. With individuals over 180 over 100 being classified as stage 3 hypertensive, these individuals are totally contraindicated for exercise due to the high risk of acute cardiovascular event. Exercise for these individuals will be completed in a clinical environment with medically supervised professionals.
We hope that you enjoyed today's content. If you have any questions on what was covered, please leave us a comment below. Or if you'd like to support us in what we do, if you could give us a like, a comment or share, we'd appreciate your support.